What's up guys, it's River and today we're looking at my top 5 cameras all under $1000. I made sure to pick 5 cameras each with a unique value proposition and I made sure to include something for everybody. So if you're a photographer, cinematographer, vlogger, content creator or just someone that loves cameras casually, there's something in this list for everybody. So let's do a deep dive, figure out exactly what each camera does, exactly who it's for and which camera is right for you. Let's get into it. Also, there's a link in the description down below for the best pricing on these cameras, so be sure to check that out. So the first camera on this list is the Sony a6400 for $900. This is kind of like the Swiss army knife of cameras. It's perfect for cinematographers, photographers, vloggers. It's pretty much good for everybody, which is why I included it first. This camera features a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor, which is pretty standard middle of the road resolution but it does 11 frames per second, which is excellent, excellent for getting any kind of high action shots. It is a very fast camera and you can easily shoot fast fashion, fast portraits, lifestyle shots, skateboarding, whatever have you. This camera does HD up to 120 frames per second, all at 100 megabits per second. Plus it has a whole bunch of color science options like hybrid log gamma, S log three, S log two, cinema profiles. Basically, if you wanna do something cool with video, this camera has you covered. And the 4K in this camera is pretty ideal. It comes at 100 megabits per second and the 4K out of Sony cameras is quite ideal. It's super sample, it's very sharp, full of detail. So even if you don't color correct your vlog, you're going to get a very nice image just out of the camera. If you're somebody that really wants to craft a look with their image, this camera is pretty ideal. The photo is 14 bit raw and the video actually has the new updated Venice color science. This was actually the first camera to have the Venice color science. The old Sony color science, I didn't really like. But the new Venice color science is amazing. It gives you much better colors, much better saturation, and makes skin tones look way nicer. The older Sony cameras had a bit of an issue where the skin tone was kind of magenta. These cameras thankfully fix that. And before I forget, one thing that I really like about this camera, and which is the reason I think this camera is kind of perfect for anybody, it is a low light monster. This camera is clean up to 10,000, 20,000 ISO, no problem. Sony cameras overall are low light monsters, but their APS-C cameras tend to struggle a bit. But because of the newer Bionic X processor, I think that's how you say the name, but that processor makes these cameras much, much better with low light. And this camera actually has a max ISO range of 25,600. I wouldn't quite go that high, but you'll get very clean images up to 20,000 ISO. Next, let's talk about the autofocus. So Sony autofocus, I've said this before, it is the best in the industry. And I'm talking about the highest, the most expensive movie camera you can get. Sony simply does the best job with autofocus. And this camera has the new AI base. Yes, artificial intelligence based eye tracking autofocus. It is simply remarkable. It is literally five or six years ahead of the industry. You can pretty much just set your autofocus and forget it. It will track everything. It's fast, it's reliable, and it's smart enough to catch faces and then immediately switch to face tracking when it doesn't see faces and track objects. The body itself is very compact and it's nice and robust. Sony is known for making really solid camera bodies and this body will last you a really long time if you take care of it. But the big selling point for this camera is that it has a flip up screen. So yes, vloggers, I have you covered. The only two drawbacks that I see with this camera is that the battery life isn't the greatest, but considering how good this camera is, I can forgive the lack of battery life. They're easy and very cheap to get on Amazon. They're only about 15 bucks a battery, so you're good to go there. But the other thing that I think might be a bit more of a hassle is the fact that because the flip up screen is at the top of the camera, you have to put your mic on the side, but if you have a lav mic, it doesn't really matter and you can easily get a $10 attachment that lets you put your mic on the side. My overall verdict on this camera is that it's kind of the Swiss army knife, which is why I put it first. It's pretty much good for everybody. You will not be disappointed. The photo codec is great. You can really finesse your photos, really do a lot with them in Lightroom and Photoshop. As for video, you have so much data. It's 100 megabits per second. You've got S-Log2, Cinema, Hybrid Log Gamma. You can really do anything you want when it comes to color grading because of those cinema profiles and you have such a high megabit rate. The camera body itself is robust, nice and light. It's good for many different types of projects. And if you're a vlogger, you have the flip up screen. It's kind of like the all around camera. And next up, we have the Canon M50. I wanted to do a more budget friendly version of 
the Sony a6400 because I realize $900 is pretty steep. You have to buy an SD card, tripods, gimbals, all that stuff. So I wanted to give you a camera that did more or less what the a6400 did at a lower price so you have more room in your budget to buy other things. So as for the Canon M50 itself, the specs are pretty similar to the a6400. It has a 24 megapixel sensor. It does 10 frames per second in single focus and 7.5 frames per second in continuous autofocus which is just slightly less than the a6400. As for video, it does HD up to 60 frames per second, but sadly, and this is a big sadly, for 120 frames per second, you have to dip down to 720p, which is a little too soft. I probably would just never use the 120 frames per second for anything. When it comes to Canon cameras, it's really about the color science and not about the specs. This camera really isn't that far from the a6400, but the color science completely trounces the a6400. Canon has this classic look that everybody loves. The way the skin tones come out is just perfect. They're perfectly warm. Everybody's skin looks really flattering. You're going to get better images out of this camera than you will out of the Sony simply because of the color science. Because when people look at your images, they're not going to be like, wow, it's 25 megapixel. It's 30 megapixel. They're going to be like, damn, the colors on that person's sweater look really good. The skin tone on that model looks really good. The colors in that sky look really good. So that's why this camera is on the list. It's slightly lower in specs, but the color science is absolutely to die for. And also, it has all the features that most content creators and photographers and filmmakers would want. Now, the one place that this camera does not let me down is the autofocus. Now, neck and neck, you probably can't even really tell the difference between the Sony and the Canon camera unless you're a hyper nerd like me. But for practical uses, it is just as good. And most of you guys will probably not notice the difference, but it's not quite as good where I can put it on a gimbal and just set it and forget it. It's super fast and reliable when it comes to photos. And video is probably the only place where it tends to struggle. It's not quite the same where it goes from face to object tracking very, very quickly. It tends to struggle a bit. But the great thing about Canon is that they've been making lenses forever, like literally before I was born. The simple adapter can adapt any of the EFS or EF lenses that Canon has to offer. So you have a way bigger and much cheaper range of lenses. And if you're a content creator, you've probably already noticed this. Most of your friends have Canon lenses. They're cheaper and they're better. Next, let's talk about design. One thing that I absolutely love about the new Canon mirrorless lineup is that these cameras are super well designed. The Canon M50 itself has a really nice robust body. This thing is solid, has a nice tight grip. But one thing that I really love about it is the fact that it has this nice matte finish, these sandpaper finishes on all the big buttons, and it kind of feels like a luxury product or like Batman's camera. But either way, it feels good to hold in your hands. It's ergonomically built. All the buttons are just in the right place. I really like the touchscreen thing that they're doing with their newer cameras. Honestly, I kind of like using the touchscreen more than the buttons, but it's nice to have both. But having the flip screen come out to the side is much better for vlogging and for most content creators, to be honest. So if you're someone that didn't like that flip screen, this camera just might be better for you. And as you would expect, this camera does have an external mic input. So, you know, of course, any kind of content creator, any kind of vlogger needs proper audio. And a quick side note, this camera does not have built-in stabilization. It does have digital IS that sometimes gives you weird warpy effects. So be careful with that. I really wouldn't recommend this camera if you really, really think you need a lot of smooth motion. But if you're a vlogger, you should be just fine. And lastly, this camera sadly has a very small battery life. It's not quite Sony bad, but it's maybe 20% better than the Sony. But batteries are definitely an issue with this camera. You will need to buy spares. Overall, the Canon M50 is a very solid camera. I really like the design on this, and I prefer this flip screen on the side. But what really sells me on this camera is the color science. I think most cinematographers, vloggers, content creators would prefer better colors and a better image overall and can sacrifice a little bit of horsepower and also get a price break on their camera. So if it wasn't already obvious, what I personally think makes a great camera is the image. It's not about just the numbers and specs, but what happens when you take a camera that has raw horsepower, you mix it with great color science? The next camera on this list is the Fuji X-T30 for $899. The Fuji X-T30 is a 26 megapixel sensor with an 8 frames per second for photos with a very, very impressive 56 photo raw buffer. Although the 8 frames per second isn't quite impressive, because of that raw buffer, I actually would say this is a good camera for sports photography simply because you can shoot for a really long time. If you do need a faster frame rate, this camera can shoot up to 30 frames per second with a 1.5 times crop, which is incredibly fast, but be aware that crop is quite a bit. It will make an 18 millimeter into a 27 millimeter, although in some cases that might be beneficial. But already, as you can see, this camera does have horsepower. 
And as for video, it does 120 frames per second in full HD and 4K up to 30 frames per second at 200 megabits per second. That is double the megabit rate of the Sony. And on top of that, it has a cinema profile built right in, which is F-Log. It is much easier to color correct than C-Log or S-Log. And on top of that, it has a bunch of film emulations built right in. Fuji was the company that initially made all the film stock, the 35 millimeter film stock, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. And what they've actually done is they've taken the color science from the film stock, put it in their cameras, and now you have built-in film emulations in these cameras. So you get this really cool vintage film look. It's not for everybody, but I personally love it. So as you can see, this camera does not disappoint. It has quite a bit of horsepower, plus amazing color science, which is honestly why it's my favorite camera. The Fuji is more of a niche camera. The colors out of this camera are more artsy, more unique, and they're really meant for someone that wants to create more visually striking work. And sometimes you don't want your work to be that visually striking. If you're someone that's maybe shooting professional corporate headshots, I really wouldn't recommend using a Fuji. The Canon or the Sony would definitely be a better choice. But you know, if you're shooting artsy food stuff, I would say the Fuji is a way better choice than the Sony. The one place that this camera lets me down is the autofocus. I wouldn't say the autofocus is abysmal, but I would give it a 5.5, maybe a six out of 10. For photos, it's perfectly fine. It can track pretty well. It does single focus really well. Pretty much every camera does, but video is really where it falls short. It doesn't have the same intelligent auto tracking like the Canon and Sony does, and you can definitely tell the difference. If you're a cinematographer that wants to create really interesting and visual looks, the Fuji is a really great choice. But what makes the Fuji really, really unique besides the color is the way it's designed. The Fuji body is closer to that of a vintage style camera from the 60s and 70s. It's got a mode dial for ISO, it's got a mode dial for shutter, which is something you don't really see. And pretty much every Fuji lens across the line has a manual aperture ring. Now Fuji isn't silly. They have included all the modern buttons like a front dial and a back dial for changing your shutter and aperture. But the Fuji is not like an everyday generic camera. It's really made to be a niche camera and the body definitely reflects it. It's made to have people kind of stop, think about what they're doing and slowly work through their photos. And lastly, let's talk about the battery. The Fuji camera has okay-ish battery. It's not terrible. It's not going to last me the entire day. I would say it would get me through most of the day and I would maybe have a spare battery just in case I needed it. But overall, I'd give it an 8.5 to a 9 out of 10 depending on the day. But if you do want a camera that has phenomenal battery, that honestly I think is probably the best battery on the market, the next camera is definitely for you also. It's a fantastic video camera. And the next camera is the Canon 80D. Now the best words that I can think of for describing this camera is beast, dragon, workhorse, Keanu Reeves. That's two words. But this camera is absolutely insane. If you're the type of person that thinks you're going to be running and gunning, shooting vlogs, documentaries, travel content all day, every day, this is the camera for you. You can throw dirt, snow, hail, sleet, anything you want. This camera is ultra tough. And of course, that battery will blast you pretty much your entire day. The camera has a 24 megapixel sensor and does seven frames per second in photo. But to be honest, this camera would be a waste of your time and money if you bought it for photos. So we're not gonna talk about the photo. Where this camera really shines is the video. It does HD all the way up to 60 frames per second in gorgeous Canon colors at 90 megabits per second. and Honestly, it's neck and neck with the a6400, but what it really shines is the design. When you look at the design of this camera, you can tell that this was made with video and long shooting days in mind. Though, quick side note, this camera does not have a cinema profile, but I really wouldn't recommend this camera for cinematography work with Canon colors and 19 megabits per second for video, you are covered. You're going to get a gorgeous image out of this camera. And this actually used to be Casey Neistat's old vlogging camera. If you vlog, you know who that is. The body itself is super robust. It will literally handle everything. It has a nice rubber sandpaper grip all the way around it. It's not gonna make the biggest difference, but it's definitely nice to hold in your hands. And this camera has a side flip screen, just like the Canon M50, which is super convenient. So you can get high angle, low angles, or really any kind of angle you want. But what I really appreciate about the camera is that the mic jack is perfectly positioned to never hit the flip screen as you turn it around. Because as I said earlier, this camera was designed with video in mind. And now this may not seem like a big thing, but try shooting for eight hours a day and constantly hitting your mic jack. It gets annoying. Though my favorite thing about this camera is the top LCD screen. When I look down, it shows me my shutter, my aperture, my ISO, and my drive mode. Now this may not seem like a big deal, but being able to look down, see my settings right then and there actually gives me a lot of confidence in the field. And I feel like it makes me 15 to 20% faster when I'm working, which kind of brings me to my next point. 
This camera is really a pro camera. I really would not recommend this to a casual person, but if you're someone that's really serious about your vlogging, really serious about your travel documentaries, really serious about your content creation, and you wanna shoot a lot and all day, this is the camera for you. The body is ultra tough, the body is designed for video in mind, and the battery will last you most of your day. Two batteries will easily get you through 14 to 16 hours. And in the film world, that's a real full day. And another one of my favorite features about this camera is the Canon dual pixel autofocus. I cannot tell you how convenient it is to shoot on a small compact DSLR with such good autofocus, have access to all of my L series lenses, and just know that my autofocus is always going to be sharp. Overall, I think this is one of the best travel run and gun documentary cameras on the market today. And I think if you buy this camera, you will not be disappointed if you're mainly using it for video. But if you're someone that's doing cinematic work, maybe fashion, maybe a bit of lifestyle videos, this next camera is probably a better fit for you. And last but not least, this is my current favorite camera on the list, the Canon RP. Now the Canon RP is an entry level full frame camera for $1,000. And that's actually really interesting because full frame cameras are generally reserved for really serious photographers because they are so expensive and because the larger sensor, the glass is more expensive, the body's more expensive, the processor more expensive. So for $1,000, I'm actually really surprised that Canon made this. However, I should mention, most full frame cameras cost anywhere between three to $4,000. So for $1,000, this camera does have a few limitations, but I do think it's worth the look. And the camera itself has a 26 megapixel sensor that does five frames per second in single focus mode and 2.5 frames per second in continuous autofocus mode, yes, I know it's slow, but it's full frame, it's Canon, it's 26 megapixels, I'm here for it. As for video, this camera does 60 frames per second in full glorious HD. Canon HD is just, it's a work of art. This camera does have 4K, but like most Canon cameras, Canon has yet to stick the landing with their 4K. And the 4K is soft, it has a lot of rolling shutter, and personally I just don't think it's worth it. If you want this camera just for the 4K, I would probably skip this camera. The Sony and the Fuji 4K is far superior. Although those cameras are not full frame. And I know this is my third time saying this, but the Canon colors are absolutely to die for. Canon color science simply cannot be beat. It does 70% of the work for you, plus this is full frame. You're going to just get a really unique look. And if you're really looking to set your work apart from other photographers, this is going to be one good piece in your arsenal. But in all seriousness, the HD in this camera is magnificent. I cannot say enough about it. One of my favorite things about the HD in this camera is the fact that it's super sampled. So you're really getting a 4K image that's squeezed down into an HD container. It's got way more detail. It's got tons of sharpness. And even when you digitally zoom in, the detail does not fall away. Although I have seen a similar HD sampling in the Canon 5D Mark IV. That is a fantastic camera. Definitely check out a review for it on the channel. Last but not least is the design of this camera. Now this is something I'm actually excited to talk about because Canon has been radically redesigning these cameras with the new mirrorless line and this camera is actually my favorite redesign. The camera itself is so ergonomically well put together. All the buttons are just in the right place. I love where the record button is. I love how the side IO is set up. I love that flip screen. And I honestly just love the overall feel of the buttons. I love that sandpaper finish. Even the new RF lenses have this really nice sandpaper grip on them. Now, I don't think that grip is gonna make a long difference, but I do think it just makes using this camera a little bit more fun. And a big plus of the new Canon redesign is the fact that you get access to the new Canon RF lenses. These lenses are faster, sharper, and have better color coding. Overall, the Canon RP for $1,000 is a very solid entry point into the full frame world. And last but not least, I wanna quickly touch upon the battery. This camera has actually decent battery. It's definitely not Canon 80D where it'll last you all day, but it's actually pretty solid. I would still keep one on hand, but it's pretty solid. It'll get you through most of your day. And that wraps up this top five video, guys. If you found this video entertaining and informative, be sure to leave me a like down below. It really helps me figure out what kind of content you guys are vibing with and what kind of content I should put out in the future. As always, there's a link in the description down below for the best pricing on these cameras, so be sure to check that out. And if you have any questions about these cameras whatsoever, hit me up in the comments down below and I get back to every single one of you. Even if you have a compliment, make sure to leave me a comment down below. As always, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.